It's Tuesday morning, September 10th. I'm heading down to the Today Show through the Holland Tunnel. I cruised up Highway 9 like a bat out of you know where. That is one of the funnest roads that I've ever driven on. It's exhilarating. It's like a racetrack. I mean, you're just flying through traffic and when you're going 30, 40 miles an hour faster than everybody else, it gives you certain options other people don't have. I'm sure you've seen people just go whipping by you and said, I wonder what's that like? Well, I decided I'd try it. It's exhilarating. I, I fully handled it completely um, because I'm always used to looking way out ahead of me down the road anyway. And when you're going that fast, you have to look out ahead because you have to see the gaps to cut in and out of traffic. And, oh, yeah, you're doing three lanes one way, three lanes the other way. But at the speed that you're going, it's totally safe and you have plenty of time to get in and out from between traffic and then you'll get in a in a gap and you'll just pass hundreds of cars and I, mean, I don't know how to describe that but you just you're just flying by people and I remember I hit a couple intersections where everyone was at a dead stop and I was I got in the it was on the inside lane there was nobody on that inside lane and I just cut over there and just flew up by it I must have passed 300 cars and in the morning yeah that road gets busy early but yeah highway 9 there's a Bruce Springsteen song about that sprung from cages on highway 9 yeah born to be wild I, I know he drove up that road that's a it's a riot I had a great time on that road and I was safe. I, you know, you got, you're going to have to hit the brakes. You got to have good brakes. Um, but we're come out in Lower Manhattan. You come right out here out of the Holland Tunnel on 9A, basically, which takes you around the lower tip of Manhattan. I just took Broadway and went up Midtown, basically. I got a pretty decent parking spot up by Times Square, I thought. <laughs> and uh, but when you come out of the the tunnel here, yeah, you have access to the whole lower Manhattan. I believe it's Canal Street, you're on, and I just took Broadway up. And you can see the trade towers lit up now, and number seven's all lit up, and you can, they look different because they're newer. It must be the dust and the, you know, but they, you can tell the newness of them. They look different than the other buildings. And where I was parking, I was like right straight ahead of me was ABC7 where Good Mor Morning America is being filmed. And I had to stop by there, but I didn't stay very long. <laughs> I don't think they wanted me around. We're going to go live now and uh, beginning the Today Show Odyssey. Enjoy it. Yes, you know. This guy don't want me anywhere around here. <laughs> a couple of New York's finest right there. I was just talking to them. They're cool. I got tomatoes here for Al Roker in a box. The t Today Show ain't having none of my dogs. Look at them. How could you refuse an animal like that? We gonna walk down there and make them refuse me on camera. Then I'll leave. Just to prove I was there. The problem seems to be these three hounds. That seems to be the problem here. NBC has decided that they don't like dogs. They won't let me into the Today Show. It's right there. That's where they're filming it. There's the people. I'm gonna try and give my tomatoes to Al Roker. This is where they film the Today Show, right here. Excuse me. There's the security. They hate dogs here. They absolutely despise dogs at NBC. Come on. Come on.
Those are absolutely the finest Michigan tomatoes that a man could possibly grow. Right there. I brought them all the way to NBC to give them to Al Roker or the NBC staff. I'm sure I can get them to take them. But you never know because these people are freaking crazy around here. This guy right there, oh yeah, he's eyeballing me. He's got his eye on me all the time. Yep, yep, see, look, 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 boy. Look at me, look at me hard. See, he's looking, because he's, they're afraid that I might do something. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not doing anything, so they really can't do anything. I'm just standing here. Now I've got one, two, three, four, five policemen watching me because I'm dangerous, apparently. These people are just incredible. I've never seen anything like it. But, you know, the security, they, they're not human anymore. They've lost their sense of reality. But, yeah, they got about four or five of them down here waiting for me. But we'll see, sooner or later, they're, you know, they're gonna let me give these tomatoes to El Roque. <laughs> sooner or later, I'll wait them out. We're down here at Rockefeller Center. Behind the Today Show. They don't even want me anywhere around there with these dogs. They act like, you know, there's something wrong with them. I guess I kind of figured that anyway. People are funny. Now I'm trying to get some, find somebody to take my tomatoes into El Roker. I doubt if, you know, it's wild. Yeah, we moved to the back and just let them cool out a minute. It was a nice view. Then all of a sudden, some guy had to clean the sidewalk right where I was standing. I was like, all right. Well, then I just went back across the street. By that time, they had calmed down significantly. And where I was standing was the same place where I had just came from. And there was a bush there right at one of the entrances you can see that bush that pretty much blocks everything off as far as camera view but i could see around the corner and i could walk right up there to where the people were getting in and and see savannah guthrie guthrie oh she just shines by the way anyway she's got a glow about her she better stay away from me because she'll fall in love with me then that'll ruin her career at nbc well that ain't got nothing to do with anything but that's besides the point anyway they started playing music a little bit later on, and then uh, they had a very important visitor. You can hear the music. It just echoes down there in between those buildings. The sound is not good. You can go around the corner, and you can hear it really muffled, but when you come up there, then it just it comes out at you, you know, but it's not a, an even sound. Uh, I don't know what it sounds like down in there. They wouldn't let me in there. But anyways... My dogs are with me the whole time. And you can see or hear now that uh, they don't make any noise. People are astounded, dude. My dogs are amazing. They are absolutely amazing. There's Savannah right there. Yeah, she. there's a glow about her. Oh, yeah. I was attracted from a distance, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I'm that strange guy with the three dogs just the type of common man that shouldn't be any and who are these guys here there's the security the cops disappeared when this guy showed up oh yeah he's some somebody help me out here and tell me who this guy is uh, he's somebody from NBC I I would have to imagine because this is the NBC end of the where you this is where you get in up at the other end, the New York cops are up there, and oh man, they didn't want no part of me at all. I was glad to come down here. At least they were civil down here. And I ended up talking to that guy on the left right there for quite a while. He asked me about my dogs because everybody said they just, you know, they're so calm and everything. And then, uh, yeah, who is that guy anyway? <laughs> 
But anyway, that's the Today Show Odyssey. Nothing happened. I left with my tomatoes because you can't give a gift away anymore. It's impossible. People either want to pay you for something or they want to have it checked by the FDA. Or, you know what I mean, it has to be bought out of a store. All the street vendors are selling stuff. You know, I found one homegrown vendor and she had really nice stuff. But, uh, yeah, you can't give anything away anymore. And my dogs were really peaceful. We stood there for a while and talked as usual, talking to everybody. And as I said, I talked to a couple people that work there and they can't take anything from anybody. In fact, one guy, you know, I started talking to him and he got real nervous. He started looking around, he says, yeah, they're watching me now. And I'm like, yeah, I know it. But yeah, who is that guy? Somebody clue me in here. Anyway. Maybe he'll give me tickets, because he sees how me and my dogs are. Next time I'm in New York, I expect to have tickets to go in there. You know, pre-approved and everything from NBC. Come on, guys. You know, I can only help. <laughs> Anyways, from here, I proceeded to Times Square. First, we had to find a place for the dogs. And at West 35th, there's Macy's. Herald Square, there's a nice little place where the, you can let the dogs off the chain and they can do their thing if they need to or just run for a second. And people are eating there. And there was shade and a breeze filtering through there. So it was a nice little break at mid-morning. Then there's a lot of walking to be done in New York. Here we're back on heading towards Times Square. There's a hard rock. I left the background noise in there, about 30% volume. The city is noisy. When you're walking around, there's sights and sounds, but there's always a noise there. And you don't really understand it unless, you know, you grew up out in the country. Then you really understand it. You hear everything, you know. But people that live there a while, they just tune it all out. It's like... Uh, if you work in a shop and you have earplugs in, you can talk back and forth. It, but the earplugs will filter out the loud noises you don't want to hear. It's it's weird how your your mind is pretty powerful. Yeah, we're in the Times Square here. Just looking around. And the dogs are right there with me. They rarely, if ever, get too excited or bark. Sometimes when another dog's around, they'll do it. Old Broadway, there's Father Duffy. There's Father Duffy Square, right there in front of that tower. Looking around. Disney. It's just about noon. On a weekday cloudy, jet trails everywhere. And it's pretty quiet. You can see the clock up there. There's the ball. And it's about 20 after 12. It's lunchtime. Hey, what about them tomatoes for Al Roker? <laughs> Of course, you know I ate them, but I didn't eat all of them. Me and the hounds uh, found a man who loved tomatoes. You can listen to that right now. I'm enjoying a tomato. <laughs> we eat What's that? You eat them a lot? Oh yeah, I got a, over a hundred plants at home. I mean, I, my hotel room right now is full of tomatoes. <laughs> yeah. They're all coming on right now. Blessing. No. Back here. Right now. No birds. I'm bathing. You don't like birds? No problem. 
After lunch, we walked entirely around the square. There's Father Duffy's statue. Me and the hounds. It takes us a while to get places because I seem to get in these conversations that last forever. All of a sudden, I'll be talking to somebody and it's an hour later. Um, I don't know how that happens. But anyways, the dogs, everyone loves the dogs. So everyone wants to pet the dogs. And I let them because that's... It's like a hook. That's how I meet people. We get in conversations then that stray far away from the dogs after a while, but it, it's neat how people are attracted to the dogs. Even in the big city, people need the extraordinary unconditional love a dog can provide. You can see it's getting later in the day as we go. I mean, the place is always lit up, and here I'm right on the side of the, the building, or the tower, 7th, uh, West 47th, Father Duffy Square, I guess you would call it. And right on the front side of the tower, there is a couple bathrooms there, for anyone's information. Of course, the condition and the weight might be a problem for those, but when you got to go, they're right there. I knew I was in Disneyland, you know what I'm saying? You guys uh, heading to Washington, D.C.? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was time to get out of there right there. Things started to get a little crazy, and the dogs were tired, and so we slipped down a side street and found a beautiful place. The marble was cool because it was shaded. And you can see right where I was laying. Oh yeah, right there. Dog on either side and of my head and one on the side. They drank a whole gallon of water today. And they were exhausted, look at them. And there was a few people walking by and everything, but it was amazing how quiet it was. It was almost surreal how quiet it was right there. Oh, and it was comfortable. And I, I'd say, I. I closed my eyes and <laughs> put myself in the hands of the angels. Yeah, about a half hour, 45 minutes later, we were highly rejuvenated. Oh, look at that. I mean, there's, there's a calm there. I don't know who gives it to who. Me give it to them or I think they probably give it to me. Yeah. They know when to take it easy. Yeah, they're always with me everywhere I go. <laughs> Look at her head. I wrinkled her forehead up like that, and she's just, she's out. Yeah. I'm going to let the sights and sounds of New York come across here on my way out. Yeah, they buried my car and told me to come back at 6, so here it is. Full volume. License to do that stuff, so obviously he's got a license. He's not destitute.
they are tired. And water, lots. Oh, they've had plenty of water. Oh, so we gotta keep them in the leash in case they tell you something. I heard that too. I heard it last year too when I was down here a week. I don't pay attention. Dirty tricks. We're on the Pulaski Skyway now south on Highway 9, heading back to the hotel with the hounds. Very nice day. We walked a lot. We're all tired. Tomorrow is 9-11, the 12th anniversary. Oh, we'll be up in, in town early. God bless everyone. And I mean that in a most sincere way.